We're in the next part. I prospered to speak for a whole almost hour um, there, even though I'm struggling with space. But it's okay because I've calculated uh, how much I have, more or less, how much each video consumes uh, depending on the duration. So I should be fine. Mara, now I know that has gotten me all saddened all day long to a point of literally I was moping. Earlier I was pining. I was I was just pining. I was out of my mind in sorrow. Because if women don't stand with me, I don't expect men to stand with me. I, I literally don't expect a climate of misogynistic men that are entitled to me. Who are married, who are trying to divorce their wives or who are divorced or who are whatever. Like men who have made so many mistakes in their lives that they, they can't stand my message. Yeah, I don't expect them to stand with me. I don't. But being a female, being a woman, I at a minimum expect that, that women, women would be able to relate with my, my plight, my cry, because it is certainly not an isolated incident what it is that I am. South Africa is a nation riddled with gender-based violence. And for those reasons, women uh, feel some kind of way. They have a bone to pick with the violence of men. And I am perpetually rapping on about that particular violence. So when I lose support from women, when I am stranded by women, it hurts ever more poignantly. It hurts excessively, even above the uh, sorrow that I feel about having no support from men. Because I don't expect in a country so badly violated with gender-based violence to have a whole bunch of compassionate men around me. They are... It, what is this? There was an aerial... Um, principality over the land that is influencing the minds of men that are allowing themselves to get taken away by a tsunami of hatred against women of misogyny so in a climate so badly afflicted by misogyny i would anticipate that abba Fazi would be able to stand with me and imagine rape rape is an especially sore point uh, in in this present time because one it is an, a real bad pandemic in south africa and secondly in israel right now there is well those women that were taken by hamas a lot of them were raped some of them even in public and it was just footage displayed for all to see some of them were murdered after being raped and the uh, what do you call this autopsies that were done were very disturbing for the i guess pathologists or the coroners whatever it is that were doing that particular job because of rape it is a crime against humanity. It has been declared a crime against humanity. If anything, by Amnesty Inter International, ever since the war back in 1993 or whatever in Bosnia, where it is that rape was so badly done against women that it was declared a crime against humanity. So you would imagine that in this current crisis going on on the planet, with that kind of tool used against women in war, and also with me living in a country where it's really a big, fat, chunky problem, given that women are also being raped and murdered in this land, for women, to then unsubscribe from me when I am lamenting on a rooftop every single day about some rapist who I keep on dreaming about having me gangani and I keep on having to fight him gilly one I've got these like it's like my knife that I'm trying to stab this guy with to get off my body it's like a toothpick the way that I'm having such a hard time with him and the rape that is happening is being done in a circus public space like a, the Colosseum and I'm in the center of it and there are women who are actually ululating and celebrating the ravaging of yet another woman I, I spoke the other day with a lot of fever in me that how is as a woman homicide when you're gonna use rape as a weapon of jealousy against another woman you're not a woman I don't know what you are you are some beastly pestilent thing that ought not be awarded the glorious title of woman you are not a woman a transgender woman is more woman than you the, the way that you've lost your womanhood that's what's good mm. when you look at a woman being raped and you do nothing because you envy her. I've been speaking about that for a minute. So women, if at all your covetousness is so exorbitant against me that you would be content with rape happening, you need to look within. You are literally like Cain at this point, murdering Abel because of the fact that you have not given God an acceptable sacrifice. You don't get to have your bed, bread buttered on both sides. And a lot of these women that are committing these travesties and these abominations all over the show, give us ID that were raised in Christ, they married men, who called themselves Christian and they ran their marriages on the Bible on the gospel they went to church together as couples and yet they could not what is this uh, patch up their issues biblically they could not recognize the dire straits that they would be put in if they divorced biblically like if you are a Christian couple and you just agree to divorce what the heck like whoa without even thinking about what that would mean you're better off staying separated and seeing what under heaven it is that that would might do for you the distance and then come back together again to patch it up than divorcing because if you were truly biblical as a christian couple you would understand upon making a decision to divorce that you cannot remarry 
and still be okay in the sight of God. If at all you're gonna go and right ahead and fetch that random stupid reason for divorcing like re irreconcilable differences, whatever under heaven even that means. On that day you are putting away your wife, you are putting away your husband, and the Lord will not allow you to have any other person, otherwise you commit adultery. You must just go back and reconcile. And even if it is the divorce that is allowable in the sight of God on the grounds of marital unfaithfulness, you still gotta go back. You cannot remarry. This person gotta pass away for you to be able to remarry. That's how important marriage is in the sight of God. You don't just get to hop from one to the other to the other to the other. So this thing in your this thing of yours of getting married real fast, and also this thing of yours of being so besotted with the prospect of Ukchada that even when a man is displaying some hard knock character flaws, we am chata anyway just so you can like spot a ring, just so you can get to say nyum nyanyuam nyanyuam um nyanyuam, just so you can get to say nyanyuam nyanyuam, just so you can get to say my husband my husband all over the show, just so you can feel sirichi seo some munna or not some alone yala munna that you own no more sola like no man's business in the run up to, or he was cheating on you like no man's business, or he was just like something different a little off. In any off, a woman yana anyway. I will not judge you right now and say that that was a dumb decision because there was a time back in the day when Nami I was prepared to go and walk down the aisle to a guy who made me sola like no man's business. I was not satisfied, Nikisi happy, but I had somewhat of an excuse why because Nikisi Mzalwan. I was not a professing Christian. Nikisi I get a gang every weekend, let I guy. That's what's good. So the decision, Ugum Chata, would have been enforced by the ignorance that comes with worldliness. Mara, when you call yourself Um Zalwan and you marry a man in Christ, you tell yourself no to in Zalwan. You even went for marital marital counseling prior to Ukchata Loku. Eson Twain, Messenia Divorsa, Ebatum. If you are not busy thinking really hard, tabulating really hard before you sign those divorce papers or even consult a lawyer about in you're not gonna be having sex for the rest of your life. If that did not discourage you from divorcing, I don't know, okay. What what the gushku too strong. You are prepared now to be like Paul. Yeah, but rather take singlehood because then in that singlehood, Aguna Mkinga, there's no problems. There's no issues. I know much that's going to be all up in your grill nagging as a wife. Or there's no man that's going to be out here rocking up at home at 3 a.m. in the morning. Marriage has its challenges. It has issues. Do you understand? And if you want to keep on having sex until you're 90, you better stay married to that guy. You better stay married to that guy. Is that basic? You don't just get to re-virginate yourself. Tell yourself that you'll stay single. No, sol celibate, sorry. And then wait on the Lord to give you a second husband. Second husband, they are telling you of which it's like, okay, yeah, now divorce is a man. And if he's not divorced, you are stealing a man from a single woman. If he's not a divorcee, you are literally stealing a man from another woman. That's what you're doing. You are stealing my husband. Uh, if at all you go on right ahead, women, and you marry a man that's never been married, yeah, now again, I've got those kinds of bonds on him. And then you are a divorcee. And because this guy, you have literally stolen a man from a woman like me. You have, you have made a spinster out of a single woman out there, according to the Bible. You are a thief. And if you won't take that in your stride, yes, any guys, you know what, dealing the road to hell is painted with good intentions. I had, I had such a horrible nightmare where this little animal in America broke out into tears because he suddenly got a flood of support from evil women or women that were allowing sin to conquer them. Women that were trying to disregard what I'm saying. Guys, I'm not just coming up with my own doctrine, literally pulling it out from underneath my armpits and gotta give me food, or no. Mm -mm. It's the word of God. It is littered across the scriptures. It's not just in the New Testament, but the Old. It's all over the word of God. You cannot divorce and remarry and remarry. It is not the equivalent of polygamy, where there is one man, multiple wives or whatever. No, because you're not in agreement with the ex-wife that you are both his wives. You have, he has left the one and taken another. It's a Adultery. It's adultery. So men like Prophet Lovi, Marcus Rogers, they have completely ignored what God has to say about divorce and remarriage. And I have gained conviction in that. God saved me. He protected me from that man stealing me from a single Christian man. Like the same thing that you women are trying to do, where it is that you want to go and steal a single, uh, what, what is this? Uh, you want to go and steal a single man from a single woman. That man tried to steal me, a single woman from a single man. Like he tried to steal me and put me in his household as a third wife being a woman that's never been married before while there are single christian men out there actively searching out with binoculars looking into the wilderness for wives and he was trying to make me disappear from that dating pool he was trying to make me disappear from that prospect prospective pool and the lord was like not on my watch 
So singers the Kenko Haramanyalo Anna, you entered into these marriages. You entered into them with men that also profess Christ and the two of y'all did this in the name of Jesus. More so are you without excuse. So if you want to trepidatiously with all different kinds of like, you know, like scared, like nervous, consternation, r ruminating in your bones as you unsubscribe, do you? But understand that even that consternation was a gift from God where he was warning you low key that Dineo Ntwaki sin is crouching at your door and this desires to have you but you must conquer it you subscribed to Garabo because there was something there was a plight that she was sharing that you understand that you can relate with and now because something that is illegal in my sight you keep on coming to me fasting praying for a husband honey you fasted and prayed for a husband 10 years ago and I gave you one and you divorced him and now you want me to give you another one God is not mocked do not be deceived whatsoever a man so it so too shall he reap the Bible says if anything causes you to sin guard it out if it causes you to sin cut it off it is better to enter heaven maimed than to go into um, a hellfire with all of your body intact that much to you if at all marriage is that important to you then you must understand that it is also important to God his marriage to the bride who is the bride of Christ and if at all you are spotted blemished you're not going to enter in you need to make a decision what's more important that's what you must understand like proper this life is a brevity the glory of the past just gone today here today gone tomorrow it disappears like that just like that your life is on ruler very very quickly you will gain joy out of children do you understand that you will raise flying around like if he dies gone i'm by your child I'm not saying go pose a poison the guy because some of y'all are good. Allah shagamu motoko. Hey, mara, if the Lord does not take your ex-husband out of the scene, you can't remarry. You can't remarry. You literally cannot remarry. Reconsult that guy. Pray, beg the Lord to see if at all possible for you guys to get back together again. Seeing as you're feeling that you can't do without sex. Because really, the biggest thing here is about companionship and sex. You should have thought about that before you rush into a marriage with a guy that kept on cheating on you. Before you rush into a marriage with a guy that wasn't even truly umzalwani. You should have done a better thing. Should have done a better thing. Even if he's the one that gave you a letter of divorcement, you still can't remarry. That's why it is so important when you are making a decision your child to do everything right be sure pray about it fast before you walk down the aisle because i said to john this out yes like it it's going to be the bane of your existence so trepidatiously by all means shake your little finger mm, with your nail manicure and only diamond dim a shake it girl and unsubscribe as much as you want i told you i'm not gunning for subscribers i'm gunning for for people who are going to join the harvest since the harvest is plentiful but the laborers are few i am looking for concerted people for the cause of christ on top of that low low this like uh, a desire to rush in the fella or to remarry why don't you look around how about you just wake up and smell the coffee look at the middle east for crying out loud wake up and realize that you don't you very highly likely don't even have 50 years left here you very highly likely are not gonna have to deal with five years without sex six years ten it looks as if the rapture is at the door second husband when all of this calamity is flying around all over the room all over the earth allow the rapture to comfort you into understanding that you probably are not even going to have to have cobwebs down there for 10 years like garabo because of the fact that the lord went and grabbed his bride just look around look around look at the country guys south africa has abandoned israel america is threatening israel that they're going to walk away from them if they don't stop fighting by the end of december by the end of this year look around look at my life why is it like this we're in the last days and by the way according to matthew 24 god the last days those that thing men will be get, getting mad people will be uh, marrying being given in marriage being married being dr drinking just basically carrying on as normal so even your very strong desire for marriage just basically confirms you as one that's just going with the grain of the last days where people's thoughts and intentions are evil continually but with a man that is obviously not of god a devil worshiper at the expense of a christian that has been standing on the rooftops speaking for and about jesus for years suffering and you are gonna go and not stand for that person the moment i think the bible says you need to encourage one another with psalms hymns and spiritual songs the scriptures also say that if a person does not provide for his family especially members of his own household he is worse than an infidel and has denied the faith so when then you don't provide for my needs even emotional ones at that as a sister in christ and you go and you stand with a man that is obviously of the devil you have denied the faith and are worse than an infidel 
is that basic is that basic matthew 25 go read it over and over and over again ruminate on it ruminate on matthew 25 the lord says when i was hungry you didn't give me food when i was naked you didn't give me clothing when i was in prison and sick you did not visit me when i needed hospitality you did not invite me into your home when i was thirsty you didn't give me drink you will ask god when I, when didn't i do that you didn't do it for my daughter so you didn't do it for me like if you are busy giving support to anyone other than the body of christ as a christian and if anything if you are actively hurting a christian in favor of their persecutor don't you see on that day you're not of god you are fulfilling john 16. it is written in john 16 that the day is coming when those who afflict you will do so thinking they're doing a service to god how in the world you could accuse me of lying against a man that doesn't even have a good track record in his own country he has failed america do you understand he is currently embarrassing america he is currently proving that california is a deadbeat state he is just a menace walking around and he has no desire to repent he wants his bread buttered on both sides he wants people to conclude me as insane when he's the one that keeps on penduluming between death spell and love spell death spell love spell all the way in south africa he is all the way in the u.s and yet he is doing this to an, a woman on the internet that's how much this guy his sense of reality is so entirely bereft of, of like existence it's just no way to be he is unrealistic in the worst way and yet you guys are attempting to make me appear as if i'm the one here that's unrealistic i'm still standing on my guns i'm not standing on my guns i'm standing on the guns of jesus that's that's the reason why i have hope always be prepared to give an uh, an answer for the hope that you have within that's what i'm doing over here so when you go on right ahead and you serve usatani wako and you call him god what under heaven are you doing when something is evil it's evil it's evil the lord is amazing that way he gave us a, a, a consciousness the lord gave us intelligence to understand he gave us a mind to think for ourselves mudimu gave us so much to run with as the human race that we might not be perpetually deceived he gave us everything we need in order to live a life in godliness and so because he gave us a cognition a mind an intelligence a consciousness an understanding a wisdom inherently you are able to identify good and evil very easily it does not take much your body agrees with certain things and disagrees with others because you have been given the law of god written on your heart inherently it's inbuilt in you do you understand it's inside you it is a factory setting a default setting that's what god has given you his law written so you are not going to have a very difficult time trying to figure out scratching your head with steam coming out and everything what's wrong and what's right and so seeing as you're so easily able to differentiate or divide between wrong and right when then you call right wrong and wrong right you fulfill end times prophecy you're calling bittersweet you're calling good evil and on that day you are part of the masses you are like the many the great apostasy who fall away you depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons you you have enough to run with to know that what you're doing is wrong but not only do you know that this thing is wrong just as it is written in romans 1 not only do you continue to do it but you also praise you congratulate everybody else that does it that you might reward them in positive reinforcement to continue with evil behavior you are without excuse according to romans 1 that's what's written in god's word you are without excuse utterly you cannot stand with that guy in america and not also qualify yourself as one of the members of the great apostasy you are skating on thin ice People are going to depart from the faith in the last days and give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. You cannot then, based on Tabaraki 2023, just run with whatever you want to run with. Good is good. Bad is bad. Evil is evil. Call a spade a spade. And if you don't want to call a spade a spade, just admit at least at a minimum that you are Cain. Like, at a minimum. Just admit that you're Cain trying to kill Abel. Because any other recognition of yourself as a member of the body of Christ is for you to walk like your father the devil and be a liar. Is that basic? You are just a flagrant liar. You are into pathological lying, pseudo loja, fantastica. All you can do is manufacture brand spanking new stuff from out of nothing. Just like the conglomerate in Romans 1 that is written of that they also invent new ways to sin if you don't want god just admit it but do not claim to be godly in the name of the devil on that day you patronize him and god is not mocked you're sowing to the flesh you will reap corruption you cannot call me bills above when i've been obviously working with god when a man that is obviously bills above is then awarded what like vindication the lord hates the condemnation of the righteous and the acquittal of the wicked make no mistake that guy from america of him is only because he pushed me to a point where i cannot survive every single day without being afflicted by his spells and when you're always at war with somebody 
you will develop a, a, just a, 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 an irritation in Gabon. You will loathe them with a purple hatred. I count him my enemy. He has made out of himself a, a, a vitriolic, scornful servant of darkness at the expense of the body of Christ. I have no business or time to be giving him any favor. He has awarded me a life of sorrow. Do you understand? And this here is a travesty. But you, who's trying to groove your clean fingers in the matted, lice-fueled hair of a hobo that has insisted on staying impoverished, a hobo that has insisted on staying in the darkness, a man who has been awarded an olive branch more times than he can count on his ten fingers and toes. If you're going to insist on kissing Galero Manojal, a man like that, then anticipate that whatever it is that is his sickness and his disease will infect you. It will infect you, and when it infects you, you will have been warned. You also will have been so warned that in your own self, with your conscience, you were trepidatious, full of consternation, to so much as click unsubscribe. Banjalin from God by persecuting his Christian. Do you continue and see what in the world under heaven happens, Gaussan? The wickedness of the wicked is clearly wicked to them, and yet they continue to serve Usatan. This guy has literally been given Jesus Christ on a silver platter. Like he was busy living a life of crime, of crime from the time he was a child. And then he had a cellmate that was a Christian that evangelized him, and he claims to have been Christian ever since then. And he lived a life of crime. That's why even recently he spent the rest of his life in and out of jail. In and out of jail. Why? beater all these other things he bore no fruit you will know them by their fruit he claims to have been born again since he was 15 according to Galatians 5 he was never saved because he's been walking in the fruit of the sinful nature he's been stealing he's been fornicating he's been doing all these other random things and even his infection with HIV is because the guy would not stop fornicating when I'm busy with a cutty buddy that was HIV positive. That's what's good. Wamba, was it Danka in there? I beat some Zalwan. I get out who have a sex and talking about the Bible prophecy. That's what under heaven is that I'm dealing with. And you're gonna go stand with that, Amban? Nanden, Nanden, he has been made insane. When demons come and they mess with a person's mind because he's allowed himself to be demon possessed by they become irrational that's why he pendulums from death to life and death, death to, what is this death spell love curse love curse death spell love yeah all those two extremes he pendulums because he's been made crazy and if at all you guys don't think that it's possible for a person to become mentally insane because of dabbling with witchcraft you're naive that's the kind of stuff that that basically mental illness is like like it's the pro it, it is the the godfather of mental illness is occult magic it is the godfather of mental illness when people start to dabble with spirits that's when they go crazy it is a known fact and so when that guy works in that level of extremity of mental illness and then you go and you use your warped sense of common sense that what kind of a person would keep on doing the same spells over and over again a demon possessed one and being a Christian seeing as you're all up in my ministry subscribing to me and then unsubscribing on and off because you think robot being a professing Christian you of all people would know that demon possession can achieve such a result as that in a man and so what are you gonna say to Jesus at the last day when he says you never fed Karabo, you never clothed her, you never visited her in prison, if anything, you stopped coming to your Pesuka because you unsubscribed and then you were like, no, but I mean, she just seems so irrational. Why do you say that? Because you know of the man in the cave that was filled with demons that came to me and said, son of man, what do you want with me? Please, please do not send us to that place. And you knew that that man was crazy living in a cave, basically like a brute beast, like an animal himself, because he was demon possessed. You know of that story in the Bible. I cast out those demons and I put them in them pigs. The pigs went out and drowned in the ocean. The way that those pigs ended up crazy themselves because of demons. And then when Karabo told you that there was a mentally insane man in America with a hard knock case, of demonic abuse, demonic possession. You then were like, it's unlikely ganja. And when you were reading the Bible, you are always in my word. What about the pigs that went crazy? The man in the cave that went crazy? What about Nebuchadnezzar that I made crazy? Because I put a spirit in him that made him eat like a beast gravel in the wilderness like a beast for seven years. If that could happen, why would you not believe my servant when she was busy saying, that's like been reduced to an animal is a beast. He keeps on penduluming from death to life, doing death, doing death spells, love spells, death spells. And then she's been rapping on about him when she is obviously sober. She's obviously of a sound mind. She is obviously what is this, what a healthy, um, law-abiding, she's level-headed. 
in a way that is clear. She's suffering and she is surviving it in a way that is respectable. And then you go and you take the side of some criminal swinging on a hammock, literally swinging on a chandelier like he is Sia. And you say it's, I mean, this chick is inventing things. She's innovating new stuff. I'm sorry, look within. Test yourself to see if you're in the faith. That is covetousness. That over there is jealousy. And according to the scriptures, anger is overwhelming, fury is a flood, but who can stand before jealousy? Linda Leia say America. I, in my dream, he was crying because he was suddenly pampered by a bunch of women that were prepared to stand with him and not with me. Well, that's exactly what's been happening in this country because to a point where Musadi will stand with a man after a woman has been raped by that man. That's how crazy South African women are. So I can understand why it is that Kishanya Tuake Basari Babanganda saw all across the world. When men have bewitched you into oblivion, you will stand with them even when they're committing atrocities, abominations, do you understand? Of a, uh, what is this, um, apocalyptic magnitude against women. You will stand with men. Why? Because they've made you that crazy. Keep on dropping women like wait to get dominoes, pa pa pa, thinking you're not next. Naive enough to imagine that you can have memory glands and ovaries and not have a man that has a bone to pick with memory glands and ovaries not come for you. You are entirely naive. Is that basic, Basari Doe? You cannot stand no satani and anticipate what in the safe da because the God that you stand for is obviously not holy. If at all you are standing for an unholy man with unholy acts that have been displayed as unholy at the expense of a woman who has also been displayed as holy. On that day, you are choosing a God that's not the one true God because he can't be. Why? Because there are evidences all over creation that there is a restraining force by a holy God that makes sure that wickedness does not, does not get to the end of itself. So, Lona, Machetang Satan. Those of you that choose witchcraft, those of you that choose Ubungoma, those of you who choose all of these evil gods that are happy to give a person their wildest dreams that is evil, you are without excuse. You're literally waiting to go to hell. You're waiting for the tribulation. You're waiting to become zombies in the apocalypse. You are waiting for the great white throne judgment only to be told, depart from me, work of iniquity, I never knew you. You have your conscience. The world would not be a going concern today if the deity of witches was the main true deity because everything would be destroyed. We would have imploded long ago. Witches have no self-control. Do you understand? They're like Sia swinging on a chandelier. They're like Tarzan. Watch out for the... Bah! Destroy the earth. They keep on hitting a tree. They don't know whether they're coming or going. Their Achilles heel is their witchcraft. If at all there was no restraining force by the Holy Spirit, if there was no God, if there was no justice, if there was no holiness, if there was no one true God that is actually benevolent, we would all be screwed. So when you are standing with wickedness, you are literally screwing yourself. When you are standing with wickedness, you are asking to be condemned because the one who exalted himself above the Most High and tried to be God was shown up ultimately. You are literally trying to be in the position of God. Well, because you're standing for bad too, for crying out loud. You're standing for people that have made themselves your gods. People that have said to you, Ntabe. People that have said, fear me or else. People that have said there are ramifications to not standing by what it is that I have decreed. People who have made a decision to make themselves God. It is the Lord who said, who can, stay, who can speak and have it happen unless the Lord has first decreed it. That's God. These people speak and stuff happens, right? And so they think they're God. But it doesn't always happen because only the Lord has a perfect track record of prophecy. And if at all you're going to stand with people who have exalted themselves above the stars of God and try to be like the most high, understand that like a lightning strike, you will also be cast out of heaven. You will literally become like the two thirds of heaven's legions that followed Satan in his incendiary agenda to try and coup God, the creator. You have decided decided to stand with people who've made themselves creators of other people's de destinies they have said you will do this and know nothing else the bible says that man speaks and god laughs mm. that in the heart of a man uh the, in the heart of man people uh, in, in the in their hearts man plan for tomorrow or whatever but the lord is the one that establishes his steps the lot is cast into the lap and it's every decision is from the lord so god is sovereign that way so he is the be all and end all of decider yeah so when then you are following creation instead of the creator you are having your decisions made for you you are following like two-thirds of heaven's legion the devil you are literally following the devil out of heaven causing yourself therefore to end up a bitter soul that can do nothing but send the rest of everybody else you can meet to hell trying as best as possible to send as many people as you possibly can to hell like with you with you 
just like this guy who exalted himself above the most high or at least tried and try to be like god and try to get me to be scared of him the way that i fear the lord yeah now today just like the devil he is trying to send me to the same hell he is going to he is just like the devil working really hard to see if before he goes to hell he can't take me there first he has become like the devil he has become like the devil that's what happens when you stand with wickedness and that's what happens when you end up fearing below you are fearing man who can do nothing but kill the body and thereafter in and of themselves die and do nothing you ought fear god who can not only kill the body but has power to take the body and the soul to hell do you understand what i'm saying i have feared rightly as i ought you on the other hand it appears are fearing wrongly and so repent you are fearing baloi not only are you fearing them but you're standing with them no matter what if god before me no one can be against me so if you go stand with that guy you might as well be beelzebub leviathan abaddon any other fallen being that's what's good that followed the devil out of a cushy pleasant heaven all the best with that all the best with that i will continue to strangle all the crap out of your throats that you have swallowed for breakfast lunch and dinner do you understand i will do it until the lord raptures the church or gives me my breakthrough marahonjata underfoot making sure na kehemi ketoro elegai lorang from here to tomorrow lankuta I will perpetually trample on anyone that insists on making out of themselves a serpent and a scorpion because I have power to conquer all that power of the enemy. I will trample you underfoot. So better stand on the right side. Recognize that those who are with me are more numerous than those who are with them. And if at all you're going to go and put your pretty little like nail manicure with diamante on it in the hair of a man with mice and maggots that, that's headed to hell. All the best following Satan Walona. That man. It's busy Archie trying to make me real scared. Real scared. Real scared of sticking with Jesus. He wants to scare me. He wants to make me nerve wrecked with sorrow of growth. With like what is this? Well, um, um, YouTube. Hoto was in the fella binary code, nobody watching me. He wants to freak me out with loneliness for the rest of my days. And I'm like, yeah, Zenunga's on Kenya. Those who are with me are more numerous than those who are with you. And on top of that, if God be for me, who can be against me? And even if I did not trust in the God of heaven and the God of the Bible, I certainly would never trust in your God because he is evil. And if he is evil, what is to say that he will not tomorrow if I trust upon him just indiscriminately with no justice at all hurt me? Lord God Wenu, I got Tembeki. If anything, he's trying to send all of y'all to hell. He is untrustworthy. He works for you at the expense of other people evidencing that tomorrow he could change on you he is a variant that way he's variable that way he's got shifting shadows his mind changes every so often even though you are of the same family you are using the ancestors of that same family to affect another family member of yours guys who got on journey that can turn against his own fam who got on journey you have obviously not chosen the one true God. Good clear. And so if at all you have not chosen the one true God, Gushkuti, the one true God that you have chosen not to honor will ultimately handle you. You have not chosen rightly Nina any pizini plome na my ancestors. You have not chosen rightly Nina any tagatayo. You have not chosen rightly all of y'all that are busy with any other God but the one true God. But Jesus, he is God. He will come back one day with an iron fist and rule for a thousand years and then for eternity, but not before first taking all of y'all to hell who have seen it fit to afflict his body because when they were hungry you didn't give them food when they were naked you didn't give them clothes when they were in prison and sick you didn't visit them when they needed hospitality you did not invite them in and when they were thirsty you didn't give me give them drink you did not do that for the body of christ instead you reviled and you stood with barabbas all the best cain because i'm able get that i'm sending out in christ's name cran k bye